this show is very joyful. We wanted to do a show we're very optimistic that would uplift the audience. I wanted to celebrate the big top. I spent a lot of time around the chapiteau looking at it and it, it appeared to me it's like a, an antenna of steel. So I started to dream about the story of Curios, thinking of, okay, there's this scientific man and he's invented a machine to go to another dimension. And then I thought, okay, mysterious energy for this machine would be electricity. So I started to research on electricity. I found out that it was invented in the 19th century. I was in love with that era because a lot of things were invented to bring people together, to connect them. It's similar to our era with internet and the mobile phones. for me to have characters that are uh, striking with the homme accordéon, Katia, Microcosmos. It's important that people fall in love with, with those uh, characters and uh, Nili has this special thing. She's got that Hollywood, timeless presence. The costume of Microcosmos is a huge piece of that character. One part is attached to my back and the other part is removable so we can clip Antonina inside the costume. It's like being pregnant with a 50 pound baby. It's a huge part of our show. I think there's 3,000 pieces that travel. If you have a new artist coming, of course he will go to Montreal before he reaches the tour, and he will have his costume fitting there and stuff. But if we have something to fix, something to arrange, it's done here. We have good technologies for like the body scanning now, so we can generate the measurements of the artist, but there's a lot that is still done by just a machine like that or by hand, and you can feel that. I like to say that every day at Cirque du Soleil, it's like the fashion week. And the same thing with makeup, it takes two hours to apply a makeup. It's a transformation, it's almost a meditation. Makeup, like you can see, there's a lot of line to it. I'm gonna make my face look a lot more elastic. Even if you're 50 feet away, you can see when I'm happy, sad, angry. The first time I did it, after two and a half hours, I did not finish the makeup. But now, normally, on every day, I would say 45 minutes. And this is the hardest part of this makeup, the eyes. And now I know my face, so I know that one eye is smaller than the other one. So I know where to pass the lines to try to look symmetrical. Yeah, you discover a lot about yourself doing the makeup. You need to look at yourself in the mirror for about an hour or so. 
This powder makes the makeup stick to your face. That's why we can run around, jump on the net, sweat like crazy, but the makeup doesn't move. Now, the secret touch. There are like little screws to fix every skin part. If you look here. So I just move a little bit and everything just goes crazy. Time to gear up. Five minutes before I have to go. Inspiration, I'm told there was some problem with a flying trapeze net in Zarkana. And so they sent some engineers to look at it and that got them thinking, well, what if we took this problem and amplified it? What if we took that bouncy net and made it bouncier, made it of a different material that could actually give more rebound? So after they did a bunch of research and development on that, they gave us the acro net and then uh, we had to create an act on it. It's like a giant trampoline on the, for the viewer, but after we have like a very slow bounce on it, completely different. Like if I'm trying to jump by myself on it, I'm gonna be at one meters high and that's it. I need like six guys around me to push me to go at 10 meters high. So it's like a teamwork and not like a single walk like on a trampoline. You don't see the net when you're jumping, when you're super high, I see the stage and that's it. So I'm like looking, I'm gonna smash the stage, but the net is here, and I don't see it. You have to, to like adrenaline. Even after like, I don't know, 500 show, I have adrenaline, but at the same time, I want to do it and I like to do it. Even just to work on the net, like six guys working on the net together, that's something you need to understand. If you're putting a new guy, I'm sure, working, just working on the net with us, it's gonna be falling all the time. It's like you need to understand the net. Our coach was an Olympic uh, trampolinist and he got on the net and thought he was going 10 feet high. He was maybe a couple feet off and was terrified. So even for a person like him, it's a completely different experience. It's hard for the cardio, like you're out of breath when you finish the number, but you're having fun. Net. That's really complicated. It uses almost all of the automated equipment on our show. That's 15 axes. So we've got some towers, chain motors, winches, and then we have a whole uh, load cell system, which is that screen over in the back there, where we can monitor all of the loads around the tent and inside to make sure the net is exactly at the tension that the artists need to be able to do the show. We have a big evolution from the beginning. If you're looking at the premiere in Montreal uh, last year, and you're looking at the number right now, the catching seconds completely different. Yeah, every time, like when you get comfortable doing like an acrobatics, at some point, like you say, okay, I'm gonna try uh, another twist. It's very cool. I am so proud of this number, and I'm I'm really happy to be able to share with the world something so unique. So that's kind of why I wanted to do this job in the first place. You know, I've done a lot of different circus disciplines, but when they offered me this job and said, well. We don't really know what it is yet. That's where I was sold because I wanted to do something that explored new territory like this. The style of music in Curios is somewhat eclectic. There's a lot of different styles. The, there is a big presence of electro swing. Like you'll hear a bit of polka and waltz, but then you'll hear some incredibly uh, almost rock and roll style of music uh, with influences from jazz. Cirque du Soleil 
day shows have a live band and live singers and it's super important because the action on stage is never set at a specific time. My role as a drummer is to basically not only support the kind of foundation rhythmically of the show, but also support a lot of the actions that are happening on the show. I'm basically glued to the action on stage. It takes some practice to be able to sing, focus on your singing, but at the same time, being able to listen to what your band leader is saying and what is actually happening behind. You have to be standby, on call, very focused. Big Tops, we're a whole village. We travel with everything, we built everything, uh, raised the tents and all that. We're setting up here around five days. We have 2,000 tons of equipment to install. Not only the permanent crew is building the site, but also we're supported by 150 technicians that are hired locally to help us. Basically here we have three tents uh, holding by 1,200 stakes. The week before we arrive we have uh, marking teams coming and uh, mark everything, mark all the tents. So first day we built uh, the artistic tent. After that we put a uh, big top mast in place. We will raise the mast. The next morning we're ready to lift it up, take the canvas out. Put that canvas up. Two, three, four! And as soon as the big top is up, we have to hang everything, all our show, whatever it's hanging onto the cupola or whatever it's ground supported. After everything is set up, we have about one day with a whole team of full inspection. You're talking about every single wire, even at the top of the big top. We have 109 cast and crew, we're around 60% staff, 40% uh, artists. Uh, we're from 21 different countries around the world, a multitude of languages that are being spoken. Hola, yo soy el Nicolau Baixas. Привет, меня зовут Андрей Бондаренко. Bonjour, mon nom c'est Gabriel Baudouin. Yes, Lego Migrini. I guess that what makes this show and Cirque so unique is that uh, we really do bring people from all over the world together for one common goal. And it's just a beautiful thing. The first time I see the Chapiteau, it's, it's an emotion that is, uh, 
There's nothing that beats that, you know, because it's a little world that travels, the family, the community. This is the, the country we live in, you know. My name is Paula Miller, I'm Curious Kitchen Manager. The main task is to provide food and good service for all the cast and crew. This kitchen is built out of four different trucks. It's an incredible setup for a kitchen that packs and unpacks all the time. We have all sorts of different nationalities and different diets. So you gotta combine a different type of food with also a variation on how healthy or how heavy it is. So really, your worry is just to make it happen on the best way possible. We try to focus on what the city or state has available, what's local, what's in season, what would be nice with the weather and what's actually available and cheaper at that point as well. We went to farmer's market, we have some local fruits and vegetables. Whenever we can get local cheeses and breads as well, we do that. a big family so it's very different from a service on a restaurant or in a hotel that you don't really have that contact with the customer here we're all a big family so it makes it very special on the Sunday is when we get all the kids and all the families to come so it's actually a very happy day they're playing and all the families sit together and can share a nice meal uh, and it is a day that you know that all the families will come, so it's nice you can plan on hanging out and having your kids play with the other ones outside, so it is for sure our, our, our big family day is on the Sunday. Today, as uh, Sunday, we have their kids circus. All the kids come here and they do acrobatics. At Cirque du Soleil, training is part of everyday life. We are in Denver for uh, our session of CrossFit. We're doing snacks three times a week. It's like just an activity we're doing outside of work, you know, to break the routine uh, every day. Workouts also help prevent injuries, so artists can always shine on stage. Very good. We have the uh, artist going through a preventative circuit here. So we have eight stations, 45 seconds of work with 15 seconds of rest. Okay, and switch. And everybody goes through it twice. Gets a good workout of the low back, side abs, and front abs. Well done. Good job, Jeff. I'm one of the performance medicine therapists. There's two of us. We're responsible for the, all the medical well-being of the 46 artists. I'm with one of our artists, Gabrielle. We're doing some preventative release on his side hip muscles just to try to get it nice and loose so that when he's doing his juggling and any of his activity, his hips feel free so he can move around on stage and do what he does best. We always try to be available to do a lot of prevention work to try to have these artists get something before it becomes a problem. Like Gabrielle and I have talked where we've taken some video of him juggling, seeing what kind of muscles he's using more than the other. My biggest concern for these artists is their, them being focused because when you have that repetitiveness and you've been doing it for so long and they're so good at it, they have the ability to just kind of have their minds wander because their muscles and their bodies are in tune with doing the exact same thing. Every day has to be the best performance. 
So the chances of being conservative aren't always, you know, oh, just take two weeks to rest. That's not always our reality. So we have to try to find things that we can make work so that the artist gets better, has improvement, and the show is also supported. I'm from Barcelona. The hand puppetry comes from my mother. She was born in a deaf family. Her father and mother were deaf. And she became a puppeteer. And she developed all these numbers that you could do with the hands. And she showed them to me. To get a knowledge from your family and to continue, it's, it's, it's very important. And it's one of the traditions of Cirque, actually, you know?
only show here at Zurich where artists are allowed to go on the big top. And we have a full sequence, 12 minutes, while the people arriving to the big top, they can see the characters already on the big top. Start of the show. Uh, this is the automation control booth. I also share it with the stage manager. We just started the awakening, which is the beginning of the show. This happens while the audience is still coming in. It's kind of set the mood and set the tone for the show. Five minutes to show, please. Five minutes. Go, 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 go. I see the attachment that people, the audience has for Cirque, and I say that with a bit of emotion because we're so privileged to work here, to create in this, in this environment, to continue this relationship with the audience. There's something magical in that.
Give up on 